Learning that you or someone you love has breast cancer is a life-changing moment. But over the past 20 years, significant progress has been made in the detection and treatment of breast cancer. One of the most significant findings has been the realization that breast cancer affects individual women differently. For some women, the standard treatment methods may be the right path. Another treatment option may be to participate in a clinical trial. The decision to participate in any clinical trial is a personal one and it needs to feel right to you. Our goal in this program is to explain what a clinical trial is and specifically what the iSPY2 trial is, as well as how it differs from a standard course of treatment. This will help you decide if the iSPY2 clinical trial is right for you. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2005. One thing that was offered to me was a clinical trial. The decision was hard um, because I think the first instinct someone might have when they know that there is cancer there is to get it out now, fast, in a hurry. When I received uh, my diagnosis of having bilateral breast cancer, I was paralyzed by fear. And it took some time to settle down and concentrate on what type of treatment I should pursue. You've just been diagnosed with breast cancer and it's a really scary time. But you should know that there are lots of treatments out there that do work. The goal of the iSPY2 trial is to find new treatments that may work better and to learn just as quickly as we possibly can which treatments are best for which woman. Clinical trials are scientific studies designed to improve upon standard therapies. They allow researchers to study new drugs, diagnostic procedures, and other therapies that are tested in patients to determine if they are safe and effective. And patients who take part in clinical trials help improve the options for those who will be treated in the future. It's hard to decide about whether or not you want to participate in a clinical trial. So I think that it's helpful to think about a few different things that you might take into account as you balance all the issues, the two sides of the issues. So one is that this is an opportunity to try something different and new, but you have to weigh that against what the ups and downs might be for you yourself. So participation in clinical trials always takes more time there may be side effects that we don't know about that we're going to learn about during the treatment itself. That's true when we give chemotherapy as well. It's always a decision. But if you participate in a trial and you change your mind or something happens and you don't want to participate in that trial anymore, you can always stop that treatment. And your care team, we, are all here to talk to you about that along the course of your treatment. Before a clinical trial begins, it is first approved by the Institutional Review Board, or IRB, which is a national regulated oversight organization, including physicians, scientists, nurses, bioethicists, lawyers, and members of the clergy. The IRB monitors clinical trials to ensure patients are adequately informed about the risks of participation and that their safety is closely monitored. In a trial such as iSPY, there's an uh, IRB approval process that each hospital and medical center that's participating must uh, successfully uh, uh, adhere to, and approval must be given before the trial can open. And the trial overall has been reviewed by the Food and Drug Administration and has also had a lot of input from the National Cancer Institute, which very frequently also reviews trials for uh, issues of safety as well as other issues. The iSPY2 trial is a collaboration between leading cancer doctors and researchers from top universities, government agencies, industry partners, nonprofit organizations, and breast cancer advocates. So what is the goal of the iSPY2 trial and how does it work? The real purpose of iSPY2 is to try and find a way to more quickly find the best drugs that will work for the, each person and for us to really understand how to tailor treatment. The whole point of the iSPY2 trial is to break that cycle 
and just as quickly as we can to learn about which agents may work for which patients and which one should go on to become the standards for care in the future. In the ISPY2 trial, we'll be giving you treatment before surgery so that we can see how well the tumor responds to the investigational agents we're testing. This is an approach called neoadjuvant therapy and it's increasingly being used as an approach to treat breast cancer. You will have several MRIs over the course of the trial to help us assess how well the tumor is responding as well as an additional biopsy. When your course of therapy is complete, you will then go on to have surgery to remove any remaining tumor. There are two stages to determining whether you are eligible for the ISPY2 trial. In the first stage, once we've determined that you have been diagnosed with an invasive breast cancer, we'll look at the size of the tumor. Women who have tumors that are at least 2.5 centimeters in size, or roughly the size of a quarter, will be eligible to go on into the trial. And this can be determined either by your doctor's examination or by one of the imaging studies that you've undergone. In addition, we want to make sure you don't have any other major medical problems that could uh, make it difficult for you to tolerate chemotherapy. If you meet these criteria, then you'll move on to the second stage in assessing whether you're eligible for the trial. This will involve looking at the tumor itself and looking at the profile to determine whether it meets the type of characteristics that are necessary for the trial. The tumor profile will also help determine the kind of treatment you might receive in the trial. In summary, you will first have a biopsy and MRI scan before starting treatment. You will receive chemotherapy with or without an investigational drug and have periodic MRI scans as well as an additional biopsy to monitor your response to treatment. Now let's spend a minute on the initial biopsy. Women who participate in the trial will be asked to do two core biopsies over the course of the trial. A core biopsy is a type of biopsy that's done with a small hollow needle and what then is obtained is a small core of the tumor tissue that is about the diameter of a pencil lead. We can learn a lot from this tumor biopsy. The first biopsy will enable us to profile your tumor to determine if it's the right type of tumor for the trial. The second biopsy will help us to see how the tumor's changing with the treatment that you're receiving. Core biopsies are an integral part of the iSPY trial because we will use the core biopsy to look at the tumor in more detail. And the core biopsies, when we look at it, will allow us to look at the aggressiveness of the tumor, at what biomarkers are being expressed in the person's tumor, and that will help us uh, to understand response to these new targeted therapies that are being used in iSPY. In addition to the standard chemotherapy agents we'll be using in this trial, many women in this trial will also have the opportunity to receive one of the new drugs that we're testing. These drugs have been previously tested in other patients with cancer, so we know a lot about their toxicities, the side effects. However, we don't know how well they'll add to the standard chemotherapy. Throughout the course of your treatment, MRI scans, magnetic resonance imaging, are used to provide doctors and researchers with the opportunity to see how your tumor is responding to treatment. By having multiple MRI scans, the doctors and researchers can learn how different women are responding to their treatment. This information can be used to help learn which treatments benefit a woman's particular type of breast cancer. A patient will have an MRI before she starts treatment. And then we will repeat the MRI very early in the course of her drug treatment. After she's completed one regimen, and if she goes on to a second regimen, we'll repeat it again at the end of that regimen. And finally, we'll repeat it right before surgery. So we'll do a final pre-surgical MRI. With a number of extra study procedures and study clinic visits, an iSPY2 study coordinator will work with you to keep track of these appointments along with your physicians. Before making the decision to join this trial, it is important to talk about this trial with your physicians, your family, and friends. There are several sources of information to help patients learn more about the iSPY2 trial and help them decide whether or not to participate in a clinical trial. In addition to this video, there is a website for patients at www.ispy2.org. 
which includes information about the iSpy2 trial, answers to commonly asked questions about the trial, a brochure you can print that outlines this trial, and information about support services that may be available at your local breast care center. Patient advocates have been involved in trying to make the decision to participate in the clinical trial as comfortable and useful for you as possible. We want to make sure that you really understand what will be involved and you decide if this is right for you. Finally, each individual hospital has many other support services that we want to make you aware of. For example, you might want to be in a breast cancer support group or you may need financial support during your treatment. And there may be other kinds of emotional support to help get you through this treatment. If you decide to enter the iSpy2 clinical trial, there are several next steps you may wish to take. First, it may be helpful to develop a list of questions to discuss with your healthcare provider. This will help make sure you address all of your concerns, especially during the early stages of your treatment. Second, by sharing this video with your loved ones and discussing your concerns and treatment plan, they will be better prepared to provide support throughout your participation in the iSpy2 clinical trial. And third, by visiting the iSpy2 trial website, iSpy2.org, you can find more information about the trial and answers to commonly asked questions. Clinical trials may not be for every patient. But having the option to consider a different treatment, that's what's key. It's not saying, I'm gonna do the same thing that's always been done, that we know works a certain percentage of the time. It's saying, let me look beyond that and see whether or not there's something I could do now that might give me a chance at potentially getting a better outcome. Being in a clinical trial can be a great way to get your treatment and it can also be a way that you can contribute to the science for future patients. However, clinical trials are not right for everyone. Learn as much as you can, weigh the pros and cons against your particular needs, and then move forward. I think it's really important for every woman to take the time to think about any opportunities they may have to participate in a clinical trial. Remember, clinical trials are the way in which we learn, and every major advance in breast cancer has come as a result of people participating in clinical trials. For more information about the iSpy2 clinical trial, please visit www.ispy2.org.